<laughs> Alright, is it working now? I don't even know what to say. I'll just keep talking until, until you tell me to stop. Oh. I mean, there's a lot of noise going on around me, so I mean, I think you'll pick anything up. So, you know. Yep, I'm still talking. Is it still not working? I'm assuming so. Oh, okay, we're good now. Okay. Okay. All right. That's you. That's much better, right? Because you can hear it. Are you guys, what are you guys working on in class? Nothing. We're waiting for, we have a new, like, 27 audio channel or audio board coming in or something. But it's stuck somewhere. You guys aren't even, like, working on Avid or anything? We're doing, we switched to Adobe this year. Did you really? But Adobe isn't on. It is on we the got, computers? We got, <laughs> we got brand new computers. And, um, like, they, there's something, like, something's wrong with it, and we haven't we, been able to start yet. We waited, like, a whole month. I don't even, it might have been a whole, like, four for one year. I swear, it was like, it's, yeah. the tech guys updated the computers, right? So they updated, we were working on Avid then, they updated the new Avid, but none of us knew how to work the new Avid, because yep. it wasn't on the plug. Yeah. That was the, a huge um, deal, that was fun. Seniors, our seniors are still doing Avid, so we have like five of the old Macs in there, and then now we got brand new ones from Adobe, but we haven't been able to like do anything yet. We're waiting for a whole bunch of stuff. It's probably better to use Adobe because that's what like everybody uses. Not like I liked Avid. It was nice knowing, and they're like all the same. But now that I'm out of high school, not that I edit a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like especially like high quality stuff. But like when I do edit stuff, it's all good. Yeah. So, are you guys doing labor up here right now? Yeah, it's just um, awful. It's what? It's just awful. Okay. <laughs> we, like, we can do, like, nothing with it because anything past, like, the bare minimum just overloads the switcher. Oh, that's wrong. We, we have only, um, like, our two-shot camera doesn't work right now, so we've been using one anchor for every, every morning. And if we have to do two anchors, then we can just switch back and forth. Like, we have two cameras. Oh, okay, okay, that's but good. One of them is broken, so like the aspect ratio is okay, all Okay, I swear that's been broken since my senior year. I graduated in 2019. What's that? Oh, wait, yeah. He does now. Why? Between the Brandywine Bulldogs and the Sussex Tech Ravens is now the Ravens and Eric Reinecker go for the two-point conversion. And a lot to get caught up here early as the Ravens are now up 8-0. to zero, Three minutes and 56 seconds into the game. So maybe in the first time ever in the history of high school sports, an early kickoff, some five, six minutes ahead of the start time, puts the live stream back three minutes and 56 into the game, but not too much you miss the Ravens pound the run game on the opening drive after the Brandywine Bulldogs had the opening kickoff go out of bounds. The Ravens started and drove all the way down to the field, and there it was, capped off by the two-point conversion from Eric Reinecker. So coming into this game, the Sussex Tech Ravens with a 2-3 and three record on the season, while the Brandywine Bulldogs are winless. That being said, tonight should still be a good matchup as these two teams look like they could have a pretty even roster. Of course, early in the season, you try to look for common opponents and how they've played each other. And you have to look at the one common opponent on the schedule so far, and that was Laurel High School. As now we see the kick go back from the Ravens and a return up the left side. Still on his feet, he catches the edge. And what a great return here by the Bulldogs as number 20, Andre Modis, gets the Bulldogs almost to the other side of the 50. 
So both teams so far have played Laurel Bulldogs, and both teams came out with a loss. Brandywine fell 35-18, to while the Sussex Tech Ravens fell 41-8. to So if that tells you anything, this could be a close ball game tonight. The Brandywine Bulldogs are led by senior quarterback Thomas Biasato as he will go shotgun formation for the Bulldogs' first start. That looked out of sequence. They go screen tipped, but still caught by number three, Kristen right off the edge, and he's able to get up a few yards on the play. Looked a bit out of sequence, but the Bulldogs able to get positive yardage still on the play. The Ravens more of a run-heavy team while the Bulldogs come in looking to get yards in the air tonight, which should be an interesting matchup here in Georgetown. Looking back at the schedules, these teams have not played each other for at least over a decade, so this is very unfamiliar territory for both sides. This time they'll go handoff up the middle, gain of a few on the play, Terrence Robertson on the carry. This Ravens defense has, has come in and they've looked to change their ways from last year. especially their home territory tonight, and limit the amount of points scored. So we'll have a third down here, first third down of the game for Brandywine. And they're going to go quick screen off the side. That's an interception by the Ravens. Cade Hall has it, and he takes it all the way in, wearing number 44, looking like Marlon Humphrey for the Baltimore Ravens. He's in for the pick six. And the Ravens are rocking early in Georgetown. Brandywine tries to go with the third down screen off to the right side. And instead, Cade Hall, the sophomore, all over it. Mark that down as a 55-yard pick six for the Ravens. And that's unfortunately been a very, very bad usual play for Brandywine as they have at least had a few pick sixes against them already this year. And just like that, we are here early, already 14-0, and the Ravens have a chance to extend it to 15. Jaden Mifflin will miss the extra point there, but the Ravens still up 14-0 in an exciting, exciting first quarter so far. And that's what you're going to get with a high school offense that goes a little bit more of an air raid style. They're going to look for the big plays, and unfortunately that time it went against Brandywine. making the long trip down to Georgetown about a two hour ride down and they're looking to catch their first win on the season they're 0-3 coming into the day and it looks like it's been more of the defenses that, that has been the problem for them having not given up fewer than 35 points uh, that being said we'll see what the offense can do to maybe keep them in a possible shootout today Brandywine only having uh, three games so far as that will be a squib up the middle and Brandywine will take over with good field position again. Only three games so far for Brandywine. Of course, a, a complete overhaul in the offseason of the Delaware High School Football Association. The programs, the divisions, the districts, we'll get into that later in the ball game but different scheduling alignments and, and different start dates, which has been a, more of a rarity in the last few seasons. That's what pins a, a five contest team against a three contest team where the Ravens are two and three versus Brandywine, which is 0 and three. Brandywine will be back out with their senior quarterback, Thomas Biasato, 
as he will look to get them on the board. Another high snap. They'll give it up to a draw this time. Just trying to find Karan Moon to get a couple yards on the draw. Unfortunately, not much there. So if you're just joining us late, just a little over six minutes into tonight's ball game, already two touchdowns by the Ravens, one on the offense and a pick six, 55 yards for the return touchdown. But Brandywine back out. It looks like they go read option and Biasato is slammed down to the turf where it looks like it's gonna set up a third and long here for this Bulldogs offense. So definitely more of a spread offense we're seeing out of the Bulldogs. Try to involve some motion, get, get the pass game working where the Ravens will try to run it and just run it right down your throat. Third and 13 now here for the Bulldogs. They'll have to get close to the 50, just short to renew the first down. So they'll go shotgun formation Biasato to his left, and he's going to be sacked. What a play by the Ravens. It looked like Nicholas Luciano was in for the sack, and just like that, they'll force a fourth down. So now we'll see Jackson Biley come out for the Bulldogs and try to pin the Ravens as far back as possible. Biley, the senior, handling the punting and kicking, kicking duties here. Randy White, and that's blocked by the Ravens! The Ravens came with a rush, and in on that play, it looked like we had tie-in. No, no, correction. We had Chase Tyler Harmon in and a few other of the members of the Ravens special teams there. Another great starting field position in this game. So a lot of miscues here for Brandywine to start. So we haven't got to talk about the Ravens offense here, obviously as the game got started a little bit early tonight. So we were coming on live as the Ravens were scoring their offensive touchdown. So we'll be able to talk a little bit more about them now. They're led by their senior quarterback, Justin Moore, as they go with more of a ground and pound. But this time they go with a pitch out to the left side, and that's to Zion Roach. And Roach will pick up a good chunk of yards, about 10 on the play, and that will put the Ravens, it looks like a first down and goal scenario. So a fast, fast start here for the Ravens. Ravens looking to extend their record to three and three, get to 500 and possibly get into postseason. You know, that postseason talk. They'll put Roach in motion this time. They go right up the gut to Sample and Sample not much there. There just wasn't much room there as the Brandywine defensive line was all over it. You'll see virtually all of the snaps under center tonight. This time they go to Reinecker. Reinecker short of the goal line, but this will set up a much more manageable third and goal here for the Ravens. I would have to assume they'll probably keep the offense on even if they don't get in, in, into the end zone on this play. Moore off 
to the right side. They give it to Jerron Sample, and Sample walks in for the touchdown. And it's already 20 to nothing here early in Georgetown. The Ravens are piling it on. Ravens will go back to a try for the two-point conversion here as they missed the extra point last time but were successful the first time they went through the two-point conversion. And again, it's Ryan Ecker in. This is a Ravens team that has proven they can score some points this year. They just haven't proven the consistency. And of course, you would probably have to say that has something to do with quality of opponent and, and other such variables. But the Ravens offense has gotten 48 points. They had a 48 to 27 win versus Del Castle earlier in September. So they've proven they can put up points and they already have 22 on the board. Jaden Mifflin will kick it deep here for the Ravens. We'll see if Brandywine can at least get good field position like they have the last two times. They'll go squib up the middle again. Brandywine a little trouble with the pickup. And the Ravens special teams, for the most part, are all over it. And a high energy sideline here from the Ravens so far. So this Bulldogs out offense back out again. They've gone interception and block punt for the first two drives. We'll see if they can get something going in here. The man in motion, they go read option to number 24. And unfortunately, Karan Moon not able to get anything going there. So a little under two minutes left here in the first quarter. Nice, comfortable October evening here in southern Delaware. Temperatures in the higher 60s. And that's a sack in the backfield. The Ravens' defense is swarming. And I'll tell you what, Thomas Piasato just has no time when he drops back to pass right now for the Bulldogs. Just no time for any of these receivers to run routes right now. And, and this Ravens defense is swarming to be a Sato. So this will put the Bulldogs in about a third and 20. And they'll go shotgun formation. Biasato gets the snap, he drops back, looks to his right. He's got his man, he hits his man. And I'll tell you what, Andre Modest will get it. And he looked to make a couple moves there, but unfortunately for the Bulldogs, third and 20 was just a bit too much. But Biasato and this Bulldogs offense looks like they're going to stay on the field. Of course, it looks like the quarter is about to run out as we're under 20 seconds now. So maybe 
the Bulldogs will get out there, show a look, and then wait for the end of the quarter. We'll see what they decide to do. It doesn't look like they'll have enough time at this point to run a play. So they're going to let the quarter wind down, and they're just going to take it 22-0 to zero and make their decision on the other side of this quarter. So if you're the Ravens, this is the start you wanted, and unfortunately for Brandywine, just, just could not have dreamed of probably a worse scenario to start. Kickoff out of bounds, long touchdown drive from the Ravens, then the pick six, and then the blocked punt. But we'll see what this Bulldogs offense can get going. Bulldogs next week will be home versus Mount Pleasant, which will be the second home game of the year for Brandywine. Uh, and this whole high school schedule, the whole high school district realignment, conference realignment, whatever you want to call it, has really shaken the schedules as these two teams have not met in over a decade. But here they are tonight in Georgetown, and you have to imagine that this may be the first of many meetings against these two squads in the years to come. So we'll swap sides, swap sides of the field here as Brandywine will now come back out. And it looks like Biasato is still out there for Brandywine. So it looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. They, they're going to mark it as about a fourth and four. They'll send a man in motion. Biasato, he has a swarm of Ravens in on the sack. That was about four different Ravens defenders there to swarm Biasato. And his line right now is just getting overwhelmed. And so the Ravens will have great starting field position is they'll have to only go 27 yards to get into the end zone. So Ravens will pass. They will to the right. Moore looking for his receiver. And I'll tell you what, Jeremiah Handy didn't come up with that grab, but he got some serious air time on that try. Pass was a bit high for Moore, and we don't see the Ravens throw the ball too much, but when they do, they like to do that rollout action to the right or to the left, off of the fake. So interesting play call. Obviously, it seems like the Ravens are trying to get a big play there because they have had a lot of success so far on the ground. Would imagine they go back to the ground on this play as they give it off to Sample up the middle. And Sample is, he's your thumper, man. He's hes your LeGarrette Blunt. He is your Latavius Murray. He's the big bulldozer that will come in and just scrap for yards. So Ravens looking at a third and six now. We'll see if they'll be able to pick it up. They'll go fake the handoff and then pitch to Roach on the outside. I really like what you're seeing out of the Ravens here so far. I know that they didn't have a whole lot of success on necessarily that play, but they have their speed guys and they have their kind of grind it, pick it up guys like Sample, Roach. They have a good combination and then you kind of have a mix between both of them and Reinecker. It looks like they're going to move the chains and they are going to give them the first down. So big first down there for the Ravens. Wasn't sure what the spot was going to be, but they gave it to them. As now they're going to go jumbo. They give it off to Sample and Sample just nothing on that carry. That might be even a loss of two on it as it looks like it will. This Brandywine defensive line has, has held up pretty, pretty well tonight. 
uh, and, and really have not given up any big plays. It's just, it seems like the Ravens are consistently able to pick up a couple yards per carry, and you add that up over four plays, and they'll get the first down. So Moore goes under center. They'll put Roach in motion. And oh, in miscommunication, who falls on it? It looks like Moore fell back on it. That play just looked off sequence. Moore and one of his running backs ran into each other. And Moore was lucky to come up with that one. It's got to be the first long third down scenario for the Ravens tonight. As they'll mark it at about a third and 15. We'll see if the Ravens go to the run or go to the air. They're going to pass out. Looks to his left. And that ball definitely was deflected. A diving, diving Bulldog on the play. Was not sure who that was. But it looks like Brandywine has now come up with the stop they need it Ravens offense is going to stay on the field here fourth and 15 probably a weird yardage for them they don't know if they feel comfortable kicking the field goal and you're surely not going to punt here fourth and 15 they'll stick with more under center Moore passes out. Is that Roach? That's Roach. He's looking for him. And pretty solid defense there by Brandywine. As on the coverage was Nizir Griffin. Had his back to the play, but never looked like he made contact. And just like that, the Bulldogs, the fourth down conversion that they did not get, well, they're right back in business with getting their own stop. So Brandywine takes over. It looks like we got a new quarterback into the game for Brandywine. They go with the sophomore Aiden Key. Interesting call. Maybe Brandywine just trying to get something sparked here on offense. That'll be ha that'll have to be something we'll look into. It doesn't appear to be an injury. As Bia Sato, the senior, still on the sideline near the coach. Looks like he's still available to play. It just looks like they're just trying to get a spark in with Key. Key will drop back to pass. He goes deep. He's got a strong arm. Overthrows his receiver. Was looking for Kristen Wright on the play. Not quite able to connect, but I'll tell you what. Key comes out firing on that second down. That may have been the most exciting, even though it was not a productive play out of Brandywine. It showed that maybe they could get something going. So a third and 10 now here for the Bulldogs. They'll go shotgun, blitz up the middle. That's deflected, that's intercepted. Toby Allender, he comes up with the interception. He's rumbling, and he's stumbling down to the two-yard line, but it looks like this may be coming back a bit as a flag is down on the play. Toby Allender, the linebacker, comes up with the interception. That, that football fell practically right in his hands. It would appear that key got hit, ball got deflected, something happened there close to the line of scrimmage. 
as the return won't stand all the way down to the two-yard line. They'll bump him back because it looks like there was a penalty flag on the play. But nonetheless, the Ravens do have the ball again. 7.49 remaining when they take it over. As it looks like we'll have a stoppage for a little bit more time here. Allow the referees to get in spot. Sample and Reinecker in the backfield here for Sussex Tech. As they give it to Sample. Sample with a beautiful jump cut at the line. The big boy making a man miss. He'll pick up about eight on the play. So second and one now for the Ravens. They'll keep Sample and Reinecker in the backfield. Moore again under center. This time they give it to Reinecker off the left side. He'll cut back to the middle of the formation. It looks like he'll get a first down on the play. So fresh out of downs now for the Ravens. They'll still be able to get a first down possibly as they're not quite to the 10. So we'll see if that comes into play at all. But the Ravens back with a first down. They'll give it off to Sample again. Sample jump cut puts the ball in the air. Did he lose it? Did he lose the football? No, they rule it's a touchdown. Sample went jump cut hurdle. And it's very, very curious whether or not the ball broke the plane on that play. Because when Sample went and hit the hurdle, the ball got up against his head. And the Bulldogs were there trying to force the fumble. But nonetheless, it's 28-0 Sussex Tech. And they'll send in Mifflin to attempt the extra point. Jaden Mifflin, he'll get it through. No, it's no good. It looked like he missed off the left side. I thought he got it through. It's 28 0, though, for the Ravens. So almost halfway through the second quarter action, the Ravens up 28 to nothing. If you're just joining us late, the Ravens scored on their opening drive of the game. Then got a 55-yard interception pick six out of Kate Hall, the sophomore. The Ravens then piled on two more interceptions, or excuse me, two more touchdowns after that. And now we're here with a 28 to nothing game. Packed house here in Georgetown tonight. Tech Pack back, of course, after a weird year last year. Just nice having fans back in the stands. As high school football, I think you could argue, is fully back here in the state of Delaware. As Brandywine will get the squib and have good field position to start. We'll see if Key or... We'll see if it's Key or... Biasato that comes back out here for Brandywine. Brandywine will start here on the 43. Six forty-one remaining. As it looks like Brandywine's going to take a timeout. They're going to talk it over. Not sure. I, I don't see Key or Biasato out there when they were in the huddle. So not quite sure what's going on there. 
We'll have to figure it out and see what Brandywine goes with after this timeout. Sussex Tech two and three so far on the year as they are coming off a 10-0 win against the Lake Forest Spartans last week. As I thought I saw the number, that was one of the first shutouts for Sussex Tech in a while. Or at least a while against Lake Forest. Sussex Tech only had one win on the year last year. Of course, that coming in the last game of the season, but now they already have two. And if they can keep this up, it looks like they'll be on the verge of their third. So now we go with Biasato back in the game for the Bulldogs. As a, they'll go motion off the side. They'll go screen pass. I think this is a great call. Caleb Janowicz, he hurdles, makes a man miss. But you know what? They get Biasato back in the game, get him a nice easy pitch and catch, and just like that, they get some positive yards. Brandy Wine now second and five. Ball on the 48, almost to the 50. Here halfway through the second quarter. Biasato, he gets the snap. They'll go read option draw. Right back to the man he just hit, Janovic. And the Ravens defensive line was all over that. So third and five, we'll see if Brandywine can get any momentum on a drive right here before halftime. They'll go pistol. And it's a fumble, he fumbled the ball. Wow, the Ravens fall on it. Ian Riley with the play. It looked like it was just gonna be a sack. But then Biasato lost the ball and the Ravens defense and Ian Riley able to come up with the turnover. I'll tell you what, it looked like Brandywine had something going at least with Key in the game. I, I don't know what their quarterback situation is, uh, but it just looks like Biasato is getting overwhelmed. Of course, he's got pressure in his face almost every time. So we'll see what they go with next time out. But nonetheless, Justin Moore go off to the left side. And the Ravens will pick up a few with Jeremiah Handy on that reception. Ravens second and eight now. Ball here on the 30 after the turnover. This time they give it off to Sample. And Sample will pick up a yard or two on the carry. So we'll leave about a third and five now for the Ravens. With a heavy run offense, the clock will go by quick as we're almost down to four minutes left here in the first half. Third and five here from the Ravens. They go motion. They put Reinecker in the backfield. They go trickery there. What a 
play. They went handoff to Reinecker. Reinecker handed off to Handy. Interesting play call, but let me tell you, on a third down on a congested backfield, that seemed a bit dangerous. But when you're up 28 to nothing, you can take those chances. They'll go fourth and two, and the offense stays on the field. They'll line up Reinecker and Sample in the backfield. Would have to think they go with Sample on this carry. As they do go sample, he's met in the backfield, but it looks like he can go for the first down. The flag isn't on the play, so we'll see what this is. As this will be a big, big flag to determine what happens on this fourth and two. So it looks like we got a face mask. It's gonna be face mask against the Brandywine Bulldogs. So it wouldn't have mattered anyway. The first down goes to the Ravens. They'll go motion with Reinecker. They go sweep off to Reinecker right side. Reinecker with some... Looks like we got a flag down. Reinecker looked like he got close to the end zone, but it, I don't think his knee was down. Interesting call here. It looks like it's going to go against Brandywine. I don't know if Reinecker's knee was down. He extended the football out to the goal line. It looked like it met the goal line, but it almost seemed like the referee had given up on the play. Of course, he had called the flag. We'll see what the call is. And open. It's holding against the Ravens. So, of course, it didn't matter because it was against the Ravens. You would have to think pretty common call when you get the, the sweep off to the right side like that with that much green grass to work with. So, we'll replay it again. Second and ten. Sample, Reinecker in the backfield. This time they go pass with more. More looks deep in the end zone. It's double. But let me tell you what. He went up for it. But great, great coverage in there by the Bulldogs. Looked like Kristen Wright was in on the coverage. Also had Nizir Griffin in on the coverage. They had Ian Riley locked up. Third and ten now. So Moore goes pitch off to the left side with Sample. Sample makes a cut to the left side. Sample looks for the end zone. He's just short, but he will pick up the first down. That time they gave it off to Sample, who got a head start, got some speed going, and he was able to pick up the first down for the Ravens. So we're under two minutes left here in the first half. Reinecker sample in the backfield. They give it to Reinecker. Reinecker falling. He gets in for the touchdown. Eric Reinecker, a score from three yards out, and that puts the Ravens on top, 34 to nothing. So they'll send Mifflin back out. They'll try to get this to a 35 point lead here for the Ravens. Snap gets down and it looks like the kick's just short. So 34 nothing. 
as there's 151 remaining. So if you're just joining us late, welcome in. Patrick Cassidy here. Raven Sports Network. We're here on the call. Brandywine Bulldogs make the trip down here to Georgetown, Delaware to face the Sussex Tech Ravens. Bulldogs come in at 0-3. The Ravens at 2-3. And, and it's a 34-0 game here in Georgetown where the Ravens, the home team, are up. Of course, we welcome Sussex Tech Ravens fans watching in, Brandywine Bulldogs fans, any, anybody else. I know we got the Klein boys tuning in. So welcome to the Raven Sports Network. We're here. Minute 51. It is homecoming week. So we will have that at the halftime for you guys to see, for you guys to watch. So enjoy that. And then we'll get right back to the football on the second half side of that. Right now we go Mifflin pooch kick. This could be a Ravens recovery, and it is. The Ravens fall on it. And the Ravens offense right back out on the field. 146, and we can see if they can get another score. Of course, when you're looking at it here in high school football, a big crucial number in more of lopsided games is can the winning team get to a 35-point margin? 35 points up. Right now, the Ravens are at 34. 35 will get you a two-way running clock in the second half. Ravens are one point shy of that. This time they go sweep off the left side and handy. He'll get about eight yards on the carry. The Ravens offense use a lot of motion, a lot of different sets and a lot of different plays that they can move from that motion that can really disguise it against the defense. And that's a huge reason why we see the Ravens up 34 nothing. Puts Reinecker in motion. They give it to Reinecker off the left side. Reinecker stiff arms a man, and he will get a few extra yards after that. As that will be a first down. 56.3 on the clock here in Georgetown. As they'll stop the clock, move the chains. And now Moore will go back under center. We'll go into huddle as the clock resumes here in Georgetown. Ravens trying to get into the end zone. Now we're at 45, not a real sense of urgency here out of the Ravens. Trouble getting lined up, it looks like they're confused. Just like that, they've wasted about 20 seconds and they're still not set in formation. They go more, pitches off to Sample. Sample cuts to the middle of the field. Sample with a touchdown. He cut up to the left side and Sample was in for the score. And the Ravens are up 40 to nothing. Sample took the toss out to the right side, cut up the left, found an open lane, and he marched in to the end zone. So we got 21.9 left in this half. Mifflin out to kick. Mifflin gets that one. It's 41 0. As the Ravens are pouring it on right now. Of course, early in the season, when you look at matchups, you know, we don't really know who's a good team. When you look at the NFL right now, you would say the Steelers probably aren't the best team, just looking at different power rankings, looking at records. But you would say the Bills are probably one of the better. Of course, the Steelers come out with a victory in week one versus them. So it's tough to judge who the teams really are early in the season a lot of times. And when you looked at the one common opponent, you saw two losses on the schedule against the Laurel Bulldogs. Randy Wine, they had a loss that was 35 to 18 against Laurel. 
and the Ravens had a 41 to 8 loss against Florida. So when you put that and you judge that together, you said, hey, this might be a close one tonight. But instead, here we are, 21.9 seconds left in the first half, and it is just an all out attack here from the Ravens. As Brandywine will fall on it, but it doesn't look like they will actually get it. Did the Ravens get the ball again? The Ravens did get the ball again. So now the Ravens with 15.5 seconds left will have another option and another chance to score. Do they go with the run play, possibly run out the clock, or do they try to go to the air here with more? like they're just going to take a kneel down they'll take the 41 point lead and go into halftime I would say that's probably a smart play here from Sussex Tech as they'll take the knee and they're just going to go in march with the 41 to nothing lead we'll see what Brandywine can do to recoup in the second half we've seen two quarterbacks out of them we'll see who they go with in the second half but right now it's the end of the half here. 41-0 in Georgetown as the Ravens have it going. Now we'll send it down live for the homecoming halftime show and the homecoming presentation. We'll see you on the other half, the other side.
Maryland Bulldogs here as they want to get something going, some sort of momentum. So Mifflin goes back, Squibb, this time they put the hand team out there. Great, great special teams coverage there by the Ravens. Toby Allender in on the tackle. So we'll see who comes out here for quarterback for these Brandywine Bulldogs. They went Biasato and Aiden Key in the first half. We'll see what they go here as it looks like they're back to Biasato. Biasato came out for a drive. Wasn't sure what happened earlier, but it looks like Biasato will go with a nice toss to the left. The Ravens are all over it, and the whole defense swarms. Jeremiah Handy and Luke West in for the tackles for the Ravens there as the running clock is off and underway here to start off the second half. So they'll mark that at about a four yard loss on the play. We'll bring up second and 14. I still go shotgun formation. Biasato sends a man in motion. High snap. Biasato will fall, I think. Think he gets it. Yes, he will. It will stay with the Brandywine Bulldogs. Biasato has been on the turf more than the football this evening. So we'll mark this down at somewhere in the neighborhood of about third and 30. And we'll see what kind of play Piasato and the Bulldogs can draw up here. Looked for the screen to his left. That almost got intercepted by Ian Riley off the edge. That's what happens when you have a very tall athletic edge rusher and a guy like Ian Riley that could get his hands up. And now a fourth and 30 would imagine you have to send out the punt unit here. Back out to punt. The first punt since the black punt happened in the first quarter. We got Jackson Biley out to try to punt it deep here for the Bulldogs. It looks like we got a false start off the left side here. As it looks like this night just is out of sync for the Bulldogs. They're going to call that against them. No, they aren't. Sorry, they're just going to back them up five more yards. So mark that as ball in the 13 now. Stay with the same formation, same punt unit out here for the Bulldogs now. We'll see what the Ravens do here in the second half, possibly. See if they bring in second half. Uh, Possibly could be a great chance for some underclassmen to get some playing time. We'll see what the Ravens elect to do. As they have two punt returners deep. That obviously is some sort of flag there. As we still have the running clock going on, so all of these flags are just adding to the running clock. 
very limited amount of things that can actually stop the clock in this scenario. Uh, timeouts and, and just a few other situations. But other than that, essentially, mark those two flags as offsetting each other. As now the ball's back on the 18-yard line, fourth and 30. And we'll see if Jackson Biley can finally get a chance to punt it. Biley will bobble the snap. He picks it up off the right side, and he'll be tackled in the backfield. Wasn't sure if we were going to get a Seahawks-Rams double punt scenario there, but instead, Biley just with the opportunity to pick it up, and he just tried to run it to the outside. So the Ravens offense will come onto the field now as it looks like this might be an opportunity for a couple of these underclassmen to get a good chance and, and some good varsity snaps here. a new quarterback into the game here for the Ravens. We'll have number 10, Brock O'Day, come in, take snaps as it looks like the Ravens will stick with roughly the same offense. Wow, how did that not get, I guess it would be a fumble recovery. Looked like 71, Nicholas Warden almost got a chance to, to snag it on the pitch, but instead somehow, some way, Zion Roach was able to get a get the, the, the toss cleanly. That looked like a really dangerous play, but instead it stays as a two yard gain. I thought Nicholas Warden actually had the ball there for a second, but just seems to be just a bit too late. A lot of movement, barely saw any flags in the first half, and now we see multiple here already in the second half. So O'Day will go under center. This time they go pitch to the right side. Able to get some snaps for the Ravens there is Simon Hill. Ravens off to the right side. Roach gets the carry. He won't get very many yards in the play. I'm certainly a little confused here by the markings and, and the, the spots with the chain gang. It doesn't look like they've moved and put any markings on the field. As it's now fourth and fourth and nine because they're still in a goal line situation. They'll leave the offense on the field. That looked like a little bit of a busted play there as O'Day gets out to the right side. We got flag markers down. see what this call is and it looks like we'll push the Ravens back even farther 
as we're now down under three minutes left here in the third quarter action. But instead they'll decline the penalty. There's a lot of confusion there with the, the flags and, and the penalties and the, and the markings, but what we do know is now Brandywine will get a chance here at the five yard line with a fresh set of downs after the turnover on down. So quite a bit of confusion on where the ball was going to be marked, but what we do know, turnover on downs, Randy Wine offense out, senior quarterback Thomas Biasato back out to lead the Bulldogs on this drive. So shotgun to Biasato. Looks like they faked the handoff and then ran it right. Maybe picked up a yard, but it looks like they got back to the line of scrimmage. If anything, maybe they picked up about a half yard on the play, but that will lead them with the second. We'll give them nine, second and nine on the play. Line up same formation as last play. They're gonna look deep. And what a catch! What a catch! Andre Modis brings it in for Brandywine as they went deep down the sideline. And they are no longer forced up against their own goal line. Thomas Biasato found his wide receiver, Andre Modis, and they were able to connect for a 28-yard gain. So shotgun formation. Biasato looking out, Eco sidearm. It looked like Kristen Wright and Nizir Griffin almost ran into each other or they did run into each other on that route. Nonetheless, in all of that play sequence, we have ended the third quarter and now we will move on to the fourth quarter. So we'll get the short break. Clock still running here in Georgetown. 41 to zero game here for the Ravens. Brandywine able to get a little bit of offense going right now. As they will meet up, they'll switch sides. And we'll see if Brandywine can maybe get another connection down deep field. So before we even take a snap here, we're already a minute into the fourth quarter with the running clock situation. It's Brandywine will be left with a second and 10 when they do snap it. As we have switched sides of the field here and Georgetown Valley. Thank you for joining us tonight here on this Friday, October 8th broadcast in Georgetown. Raven Sports Network here with the live stream as Biasato looks out. Quick feet, flush out of the court, flush out of the pocket of the left side. He puts up a duck. That's out of bounds. Not much going here for the Brandywine Bulldogs tonight.
So a third and ten here for the Bulldogs. We'll see if they could get something going. It looks like Biasato has at least had a little bit more time to, to throw in the pocket, at least on this drive. So Biasato in shotgun formation. He gets the snap. It's looking to his right. It's flushed out to his right. He'll put up a ball that goes out of bounds. He threw it in the direction of Kristen right there. Not able to haul it in. We'll get a fourth and ten. in the midst of that there was a holding penalty so instead of being pressed into a fourth down situation it's only second down here for Biasato and the Bulldogs Biasato in motion his man over to the left side of him Talking, communicating to Ron Moon, and that's who he gives the ball to. A halfback draw to Moon, who will get a yard or two on the play, will lead to a third down and long. So just over eight minutes to play here. 41 nothing game. Sussex Tech looks forward to next Friday here live on YouTube. Del Mar High School comes into town. A meeting against two teams that haven't played in a while either. Again, whole division, whole district, whole conference realignment here in the Delaware High School football. It's basically turned the whole system upside down. They've re-ranked, re-leveled teams. And therefore, we've gotten this matchup tonight as they look for Moon off the right side, and he lost yards on that play. Ravens defense tonight has been all over. The biggest play they've given up was that uh, long 28-yard reception down the sideline at the end of the third quarter. But the Ravens now no longer the Antelope and North, at least for football. Only football realignment right now. They are in District 2A. There's three divisions in that district. The idea, the focus of this was to make divisions conferences and the teams more competitive and therefore that's why kind of the whole system's been flipped upside down as a bad snap oh and what a hit by the Ravens number 60 comes in and Rashawn Smith he blew up that play so the Ravens offense will now come on the field They'll probably snap this with a little under six minutes remaining. But the Ravens now forced into District 2 way. Of course, playing in the Henry Open North last year did not fare well for them. The Ravens have not made a trip to the postseason. And it has to be at least six to seven years at this point. So essentially in the offseason after the, the COVID season last year, the higher ups of the Delaware High School Football Association, DIAA, whoever, all got together and they decided to do this conference division district realignment. No longer is there Division I, Division II schools. Now you have Divi uh, District 3A, District 2A, District 1A, and then you have different divisions within the district. So it seems confusing, but nonetheless, there are teams that are playing each other. This, like, for instance, Sussex Tech has a buy in their schedule, which is almost unheard of. But that's because they got a waiver to play early on an extra week, essentially week zero. And so they'll get a buy later in the season, which could come in very well for them if they're able to possibly get a couple more wins, stack some more wins. As far as the district and division realignment goes, I'm not sure how many wins get you a playoff spot. You know, it used to be if you could at least get to around that seven win, you're definitely in the conversation. Six could get you there. 
eight, you would think, but it was a point system is how the playoffs used to work. Now everything is completely different. So we'll see on the competitive level of how different playoffs the seeding turns into, of course, with the different districts. That will be something that we'll have to figure out late, later in the season. And looking for his man there. O'Day was trying to find Zane Adams on the play. Rolling out to his right. So a fourth down now. As we are only four minutes remaining here in Georgetown. Now, if you are a Brandywine Bulldog fan, next week you turn your attention to a home game against Mount Pleasant. Friday Night Lights. And we'll see what the Bulldogs can do. Maybe possibly get their first win next week as we have some whistles blow this, blow this play dead. Ravens at home again next week. Delmar Wildcats come into town. Should be a pretty competitive matchup. You can watch it live here on the Ravens Sports Network. Then they go away to Red Lion. Then a familiar opponent, one of the only familiar opponents in the schedule for the Ravens this year is Milford. They get a bye week and then home against Odessa again. That will be senior night. So after this, you look at the schedule and you go, there's only four games left for the Ravens. You take a three and three record into that, maybe if they can run the table, we're looking at a playoff spot, maybe three and one. A lot of uncertainty with the new rankings, the new system, and we'll see how that shapes up for a team that has made improvements. This is now the second season under new Ravens head coach, Brad Ellingsworth. He took the job over the old coach who had been a staple in the program for a while, Mark Willen. Of course, that breakup, that separation after they parted ways has now led Mark Quillen to coach the Seifert High School Blue Jays. And you would have to argue, maybe it's not a breakup, but you have to argue maybe who won the breakup. And of course, you're only two seasons in, but right now the results for both teams are very similar. But a three and three record now for the Ravens makes you wonder, maybe the Ravens are getting the upper hand. But now Biasato, he goes sidearm. Impressive there from Biasato after the turnover on downs. Brandywine comes out, Biasato comes, slings it sidearm as now we are under two minutes left here in the game, just like that. Fourth quarter, second half. The second half has literally taken 24 minutes. The clock has not stopped once. As now we are over, just over a minute left in the game. You know the game's in hand when the coaches start coming off of the press box, start making their way down. As Biasato and Shotgun just looking to see if maybe they can carry any momentum in the next week, and he finds his man. How about that from Biasato? He found Andre Modis. And Brandywine was able to get something going there. Just like that, we're under a minute remaining. Modis looks like he, he possibly got hurt on the play, but it looks like he, he got off to the sideline. Modest has been one of the guys that have made some plays tonight for Brandywine. So that, obviously, you got to hope that he's okay on that play. This may be the last game of the night here, or the last play of the night here for Biasato and the Brandywine Bulldogs. He goes, he fires deep, has number three. I mean, that the play's blown dead. Not sure what happened there. So, inc incorrect, that's not gonna be the last play of the game. Can't imagine, false start, because now we only have 10 seconds left. And it looks like that's gonna be the game here in Georgetown. It's a 41 to nothing victory. Just like that, the Sussex Tech Ravens have a second consecutive shutout. The Ravens pounded it on the ground tonight, got a hot start. 
now the Ravens come out victorious.